Hey everybody, it's 2019. I wanna talk more about threads and specifically how threads can be a little bit scary and a little bit difficult to work with. New programmers often treat threads like bacon. Like you can add them to anything and it's gonna make it faster and better and more responsive and just mm, so delicious. But the reality is a lot more complicated. And so today I wanna to talk about concurrency, parallelism and thread safety. So let's start with a little example. So I've got an example program here. Let's say I wanna do some simple math, like maybe I wanna count up to some big number, like a billion, pretty simple. Now let's say I wanna do it twice. Okay, so, so here I'm counting to a billion twice. I know this is a simple example, but it's gonna be useful. Now let's just, let's compile it and let's time our code and see how long it takes to run. Okay, so it takes about four seconds. Okay, now let's see what happens when we do the counting in two different threads. So I've talked about the pthreads library in two previous videos, and if you haven't already watched them, you may want to go back and watch them now. It may make this video make a little more sense. And I'll put a link to those videos in the description. But anyway, one thread is going to do half of the counting, and the other thread is going to do the other half of the counting. And when in class I ask students to predict what's going to happen here, almost everybody seems to think that things are going to move faster. So let's see if they're right. So we compile it, we run it, and... Okay, that's not cool. We got two issues. The first is that it got slower, and the second is that it got the wrong answer. Now let's start with the wrong answer because faster, fast or slow doesn't make any difference if you're getting the wrong answer. Okay, so what's going on? Well, one clue is that if I run the program many times, I get a different answer each time. So whatever's going on isn't consistent and it's, it depends on the timing of the program. Now the issue is that the increment operator actually does multiple things. It's not just one operation, it's actually multiple operations. It reads the variable, it adds one to the variable, and then it writes the new value back into the original location in memory. So it's basically doing three things, and it's equivalent to this code right here. And now let's say I'm doing this over and over again in two different threads, and if these threads line up just right or wrong, what you can have is that each thread can read the same value increment it, and then write the same value back. And instead of incrementing the counter by two, we've incremented the counter by one. So, so we've lost some of our operations. And that's why we're getting a different count each time through is that sometimes we're getting unlucky and things are overlapping in a way that's causing us to compute the wrong result. And so as is, this code is not safe to run in multiple threads, or we might say that this code is not thread safe. This specific type of software bug is called a race condition. And the reason we call it a race condition is because the two threads are basically racing and we're seeing who gets to write first or who gets to write last. And the outcome of the program depends on which thread gets there sooner. So let's fix the race condition first because correctness is more important than speed. And then we'll come back to the speed issue. The easiest way to fix a race condition like this is by trying to make this operation, which has multiple parts, this increment operation, trying to make it atomic. Atomic just means that we want it all to happen as though it were one unit, so you can't interrupt it. Okay, so if one thread is doing an increment, another thread can't start doing an increment on the same value until this one is done. That's what it means to be atomic. Now, most processors have built-in atomic operations, and different compilers support these atomic operations in different ways. But I don't recommend you use them because it makes your code fragile. Anytime you switch from one processor to the other, or even if you switch from one compiler to another, likely your code's gonna have to change. And we really don't want that. So instead, we're gonna use locks. Now locks, sometimes called mutex locks, mutex for mutual exclusion locks. Now a mutex lock is a computing abstraction that allows one thread to basically exclude other threads and say, hey, I, I have the floor. I have the right to work in this space. Everybody else has to wait. Now we're using the pthreads library. So what we're gonna use, we're going to use the functions pthread mutex lock and pthreads mutex unlock to grab the lock and then release it when we're done. Okay, so now, so now we just need each thread to grab the lock before starting to increment and then release it when it's done each time incrementing. And remember that only one thread can have the lock at a time. So if one thread calls pthread mutex lock and gets the lock and another thread calls pthread mutex lock, that second thread is going to wait. pthread mutex lock won't return until the other thread calls unlock and releases the lock and then it will be allowed to proceed. So only one thread can have the lock at a time. So now if we compile our code and run it, well, the good news is that now we got the right answer. The bad news is that our code is even slower than it was before, like way slower. Like four seconds has become 14 minutes almost. And so now would be a really good time to talk about the speed issue. But first, some terminology. Concurrency and parallelism. 
If two processes or threads are working in parallel, that means that they are actually doing work at exactly the same time. Parallelism typically requires some kind of hardware support like multiple cores or some other, maybe a coprocessor or something like that. My machine does have multiple cores, so it's possible that my threads are running in parallel. Now the concept of concurrency is a little bit looser. So imagine if my machine only had one core. If it only has one core, it can really only be running one thread at a time. But we really have many threads in the system at any given time, and so what it's gonna do is it's going to run one thread for a short amount of time and then switch to the other and run that one for a short amount of time. And it's gonna switch back and forth and back and forth. And, it's, and if it switches quick enough, maybe as the user, I don't actually notice the switching. I, it just looks like things are making progress, but they're making progress more slowly. Now in this case, this is definitely not parallel, but we'd still call this concurrent. Because as far as the user is concerned, as far as things appear, things are still making progress at the same time. I'm not having to wait till one finishes to start the other. Now the problem is that there's a lot of things that can prevent you from getting parallelism in your threads. One of those is memory sharing. So in our example, we have a variable that's shared between the two threads and they're each accessing it a billion times. They're accessing it all the time, every time through the loop. So the machine is trying to keep that memory coherent and it keeps shuttling memory back and forth. The OS might actually just stick both of these on the same core just to avoid all of this memory sharing contention. But the point is the sharing is going to prevent you from getting really great parallelism. And now I've added locks. And so with locks, now I've got this lock and unlock function and I'm calling it billions of times, literally billions of times. And the overhead is definitely considerable. And that's why we're ending up with minutes of runtime now instead of just seconds. Because now we just have a lot of overhead and we're not actually able to do things in parallel. Each thread has to wait for the other one so it can get the lock and then it moves forward. And so they're taking turns and all this turn taking has a lot of overhead. So about now you're probably wondering what's the point? Threads add all these safety issues and they make things slower. So what's the upside? Why would I ever use a thread? And the fact is there are times that are appropriate to use threads. And to give you an idea of what those look like, let's look at another example. Okay, in this example, one thread still counts numbers, but the other thread is gonna do some IO. Specifically, it's going to go out on the network, use a socket, and it's gonna download a web page, specifically Google's homepage. Now this is very similar to my sockets client example that I shared a while back. If you haven't already, maybe watch that video for a more detailed explanation. But in this case, the delays aren't all caused by the processor and the threads have very little memory sharing. So these tasks can be handled in parallel, not just concurrently. Okay, so let's run it without threads. Now let's run it with threads and you're gonna notice that things are noticeably faster in this case. Now threads are also useful when building user interfaces because often your user interfaces are not about getting a ton of processing done, but, they do, but you do want them to be responsive. You want your code to respond very quickly when the user does something. And if your program has to do a bunch of disk IO or send something over the network or wait for some kind of feedback, you don't want mouse click responses or keystroke responses to get slowed down by all that delay. So in that case, it makes sense to have a thread that can handle some of those user interactions while you do some of the heavy lifting in another thread. But I guess the message is be careful. If your program doesn't need threads, it's almost always better to leave them out. You're gonna have fewer bugs, you're gonna have easier debugging, things are just gonna be simpler. And as a programmer, simple is definitely your friend. And that's all the time I have for today. I hope this helps you more effectively use threads in your programs. I hope it helps you see threads and locks as tools that have a place and that are important, but not as some magical computing bacon that you can just sprinkle into your programs and make everything more awesome, because they're not. And with that, I'll say happy coding and I'll see you soon. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe. Please click the bell if you want to make sure that you don't miss any future videos. I definitely appreciate all the feedback I've been getting from you. And for those of you at Clemson that are going to be in my classes this semester, I look forward to seeing you in uh, the coming week. Yeah, I'll see you later.